Chapter 6. Programming and Debugging. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss the general flow for programming a device, and debugging it on physical hardware. Chapter 6 consists of four sections. In the first section of the chapter, Programming Basics, we will review the general flow for programming a device using Radian. In section 2 of the chapter, Device Programming with Programmer, we are going to discuss Radian's programmer tool, and how it can be used to program a device. In the third section of the chapter, Debugging with Reveal Inserter, we will introduce Radian's Reveal Inserter tool, and discuss how it can be used to add debug cores to a design. Finally, in the fourth section of the chapter, called Debugging with Reveal Analyzer and Controller, we will discuss Reveal Analyzer and Controller, and how it can be used. Chapter 6, Section 1. Programming Basics. In this section of the video series, we will be reviewing the basics of device programming using Lattice Radian. The final step in the Radiant design process flow, is to generate a programming file for a project. The programming file, is the file that will be used to program the selected device for a project. There are two ways a programming file can be generated, after a project's implementation has completed place and route. The first way, is to click the Export Files button from Radiant's Process Toolbar, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way to generate a programming file, is to use the Task Detail view by clicking its icon, and then double-clicking the Export Files section. Both of these methods work the same way, and will generate a bitstream programming file for a project's active implementation. Once a programming file has been generated, users can use Radiance Programmer Tool to program a device. Radiance Programmer Tool is a programming environment for PC and Linux systems that can be used to program a device or a daisy chain of devices. Radiant also comes with a standalone version of the Programmer Tool that can be used for device programming outside of Radiant. In this chapter, we will be focusing on the Programmer Tool flow using Radiant and will not discuss the standalone version of the tool in depth. The main difference between the two versions of the programmer tool, is that launching it from Radiant will generate a programming project, and will pre-populate some fields of the programmer. While the standalone version of the tool will not pre-populate or generate anything, and requires more user selections to begin programming a device. With that said, there are two ways to launch the programmer tool from Radiant. The first way, is to click the programmer icon from Radiant's toolbar, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way, is to select tools from Radiant's menu bar, and then programmer from the drop-down that appears. Both of these methods work the same, and will open the programmer tool in a separate window. Once the programmer tool has launched, a window similar to the figure on the slide will appear. This programmer window, is what we will be using to program a device, or a daisy chain of devices. Near the top of the programmer window, is the section for configuring devices for programming. Each row in this section, corresponds to a device being programmed. By default, only the default selected device for a project will appear here, however, additional devices can be added using the Add Device button, located at the top of the window. On the side of the programmer window, is the Cable Setup section. In this section, Users can configure the cable settings used for device programming. Near the bottom of the pro programmer window is the application output. As the programmer tool is used, messages, reports, and errors for the current programming session will appear in this area. The programmer tool also saves a more detailed version of the console messages in a log file. To view the log file for the current programming session, select the log icon, as can be seen from the figure on the screen. The log file can also be opened by selecting View from the menu bar, and then Log from the drop-down list of options. The Programmer tool also contains a Tickle console. To open the Tickle console, select the Tickle console tab from the bottom of the Programmer window. This will switch the active view in that area from Application Output, to the Tickle console. The Programmer tool's Tickle console, is an interactive Tickle console that can be used for executing scripts, and custom Tickle commands. Additionally, any tickle commands that are executed while using the programmer tool, will also appear in this section. The final thing we are going to discuss, are the files used to configure a programming session. 
To use the programmer tool, a .xcf chain configuration file is required. This file contains the settings used to configure the settings for a programmer session, like the targeted devices, cable settings, and more. This .xcf file is the main difference between Radiant standalone and built-in versions of the programmer tool. If the programmer tool is launched for the first time using Radiant, a basic chain configuration file will be generated automatically. The name of this generated chain configuration file will match the name of the active implementation. If the programmer tool is launched using the standalone, then a chain configuration file will have to be created manually. If users want to open an existing programming session, then there are no differences between the built-in and standalone versions of the programmer tool, except that users will have to select the file to open if the programmer standalone is used. When a chain configuration file is added to a project, it will appear in the programming files folder of its active implementation, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. One thing to note from the example on the slide, is that the name of the generated chain configuration file matches the name of the active implementation, as was mentioned earlier in the video. A useful feature of the files in the programming files folder, is that they can be used to directly launch the programmer tool. To open the programmer tool using one of these files, double-click the name of the chain configuration file you want to open. Doing this, will launch the programmer tool, and open the selected chain configuration file. One final thing to remember about .xcf files, is that there can only be one active chain configuration file for each implementation. To switch the active chain configuration file for an implementation, right-click the name of the file you want to switch to, and select Set as Active from the drop-down list of options. The name of the selected .xcf file should be in bold, indicating that it is active. The active chain configuration file for the active implementation is the file that will be used if the programmer tool is launched using the built-in programmer tool. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 6.2, Device Programming with Programmer.